everybody. Thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcagiani, with another great talk at Turnpa Health and Wellness Center. Today we're going to be going over what is CBD and what is THC. How do they differ? We'll be talking about how does CBD and THC interact with the body, and then reasons for using THC and CBD, or if they can be used together. Let's dive in. So first, what is CBD and THC? So CBD stands for cannabidiol. And there is a little bit of misnomer. It can be used from hemp, which is a non-psychoactive component uh, or plant, which I'll talk about, or it can be made from, from marijuana, which can activate the psychoactive effect, which we'll talk about. So CBD can be made from hemp, or marijuana. It primarily is made from hemp because it can be legalized and it is legalized to sell uh, through all 50 states and sell over the counter as well. Whereas if using marijuana, only certain states are legalizing that uh, ability to do that. Uh, with CBD, you do need to realize that there is legally you can have up to 0.3% THC, which is a psychoactive component component, but let me just provide some information and some clarity. It will not create the psychoactive effect or that high feeling that you get from THC, uh, just so you're aware of that. And that psychoactive effect, again, is the, the high feeling or that out-of-body experience that you, that you would feel from using THC. Now, THC, this is tetrahydrocannabidiol. And that's what CBD uh, THC stands for. This is made from the marijuana plant, and we're not going to get into the different strains. Um, it is, if it's in a liquid form, it can be uh, produced up to 30% in its quantity. And this will create the psychoactive effect, meaning that out of body experience, uh, you know, that giddiness, the hunger aspect. Um, some of the more common high or stoned uh, uh, symptoms or, or um, uh, so those things that are synonymous with, with smoking marijuana. So what is the major difference? We've kind of already talked about this. So CBD is non-psychoactive. It's not going to create that out-of-body experience. It's easier to met metabolize. We don't have to worry about breaking it down in various areas and it's just it's easier for the liver to handle and metabolize appropriately. So THC is going to have the psychoactive effect. Again, like we talked about that outer body, body experience and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to break down versus CBD. That being because when it is metabolized, it produces 11 hydroxy tetrahydrocannabidiol or 11-hydroxy metabolite. And what happens is that's the metabolite that creates that out of body or that high sensation. And what happens is that the reason why it's harder for that to metabolize is because it typically in the breakdown or the metabolic process, we take something in and we create metabolites. Usually those metabolites express a a, uh, a lower affinity or a lower expression of whatever that food or drug that we, t we have taken in because it's been broken down. Well, in this case, the 11 hydroxy metabolite does the opposite. When it's broken down into metabolite, it now expresses even a more potent effect from the THC. And it also can be expressed in potency uh, in versions we take, whether it be taking orally through an edible or whether we're smoking it. Typically through the edible, uh, it's considered to be much more difficult to metabolize because when we have digestion, basically what happens is we digest the, the foods and then we circulate it through the liver. As we circulate through the liver, where the liver actually increases the potency of that 11 hydroxy metabolite. So that's a reason why. And then when we smoke it or vape it, the lungs get a chance to metabolize it uh, even further. So that's why there's some discrepancy in the, uh, the 
the metabolic process of THC. That being said, I just want to quickly touch upon um, that taking edibles or if you're basically taking edibles to be careful about that because it can incre increase the psychoactive effect of the THC and also to be aware of anyone typically I would suggest below the age of 25 should be cautious when taking THC because it can create that psychoactive effect and it can create that psychosis. Um, before we're typically around ages 21 to 25 um, is when the your frontal cortex your frontal lobe completely develops Till then, you're still at risk of not fully developing that frontal lobe and driving psychosis. Uh, fun fact, that's why in Canada, they typically will not prescribe THC to anyone under the age of 25. So just to be aware about that. We'll talk about certain scenarios where situations, it might be beneficial for an adolescent to try small doses of THC, but we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. So some physiology real quick behind THC and CBD. So just understanding uh, what's going on here. So first with THC, we have endocannabinoids and then we have the phytocannabinoid, which is the THC. So endo, let's back up. Endocannabinoid is a neurotransmitter that is naturally produced in the brain. Think of this as like your bliss molecule. Endocannabinoid creates that happiness feeling, creates that giddy, uh, giggly, laughing, laughing feeling sensation uh, from the, the ananamide. Uh, ananamide can be increased when we are exercising. Also, ananamide can be increased uh, or it can activate the CBD1 and CB CBD2 receptors, the CB1 and CB2 receptors, excuse me, with THC. So that's really what's going on here is THC uh, can, can increase the binding of CB1 and CB2 and signal that euphoric feeling that we get from the natural occurring ananamide. So that's how we get that sensation versus C versus CBD, where CBD has a lesser affinity to binding to that CB1 receptor and CB, CB2 receptor, like THC. THC does a really good job binding to that and mimicking that, uh, mimicking that endocannabinoid, ananamide. But CBD has a more difficult time doing that. But where it comes in and where it shines is that it creates greater affinity for binding of other receptors or ion channels. It creates a neurotransmitter to stay longer in the synapse so it's more likely taken up. So it's easier for a receptor to grab onto. It also causes the G-coupled protein, makes it easier to bind to again. So two aspects with CBD is that it leaves more neurotransmitters there longer for them to bind and it also is easier, it makes it easier for the body to grab other, other neurotransmitters. And then THC is really important because it can mimic ananamide, that naturally occurring, naturally occurring bliss molecule, and bind to that CB1 receptor and CB2 receptor. So really important, when are we going to use this? When is it uh, applicable? So first, I just want to make sure that you're aware of uh, prescribing THC is not in my scope of practice, uh, which I do not do. If you're interested or think you might be uh, someone who might qualify for THC, we have Dr. Regina Smith, who is an amazing practitioner at the Mechanicsburg office at Turnpa Health and Wellness Center, who is fantastic. And I would highly recommend, if that's something that you're thinking about, to reaching out to her. Again, that's Dr. Regina Smith. Um, so that being said, and then CBD is over the counter. We'll talk about some products that I recommend. But first, we're going to talk about when using CBD. When would we want to use this and why would we want to use it for? So remember, when we talked about CBD, it was really good for uh, causing to have uh, reuptake, to leave the neurotransmitter in the synapse longer. And it also was, we talked about CBD doing a really good job causing other receptors to bind to neurotransmitters. 
So we're going to talk about these receptors right now. As you saw in the previous slide, uh, there was the, the PPAR, the TR, P5, and various receptors. We're going to go into what those ones do and how they influence the body. So with the PPAR, uh, it induces tumor regression. So we have to be careful here uh, because it doesn't help with all cancers, but it, there's theory and the research is showing that CBD and THC can be beneficial for cancer pre prevention or for tumor regression and decreasing the size of tumors. For example, with there's research out there showing that with the HER2 positive breast cancer, that there is a cannabinoid, cannabinoid, rece cannabinoid receptor on the HER2 gene, which actually decreases the size of the tumor in, with breast cancer. But another research has shown with a different type of cancer that it actually increased uh, tumor growth. So we have to be careful, it's not a panacea, one size fits all, it is very specific and we need to be aware of that. Also, the, the PPAR receptor activation causes to degrade amyloid plaques. So really helping with dementia and Alzheimer's symptoms, creating good cognitive function and creating a healthy brain so we're not scarring and uh, causing sclerosis of important centers of the brain. Another receptor that CBD interferes with or uh, it activates is the TPAR5, the TPR5, excuse me. This activates or causes an analgesic effect. Basically what that means is it helps to modulate pain. So a lot of patients dealing with fibromyalgia, joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis, this could absolutely be beneficial uh, in using. Uh, next, obviously it's very important to, that it has an effect with anxiety, addiction, helps with appetite, sleep, we talked about pain perception, and it's really helpful for nausea and vomiting. Uh, this is highly studied in THC, so with chemo, uh, chemotherapy, chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, THC is very beneficial. The reason why for the, the nausea or, or the vomiting um, is because we're able to, it's able to kind of stabilize and we get that euphoric feeling that helps to influence, um, influence the, that aspect of the nausea and the vomiting. And it also helps to prevent uh, chemotherapy cachexia, which is muscle wasting, uh, because we're increasing that hunger satiety sensation. So when the THC binds with the CB1 receptor, it releases a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin is your uh, hunger hormone. So when that's released, it signals to eat. So therefore, we get you to eat. It decreases your... Uh, your sensation of nausea, it decreases your sensation of vomiting because we're now creating that satiety, we're getting you to eat, and we're decreasing that muscle wasting because we're giving you the materials to grow. Very, very helpful for anxiety, excuse me, very, very helpful for seizure-like episodes, especially with our epileptic seizures or our autism. So this is where I would be careful in using THC, but this would be probably a clinical, um, a clinical possibility in at least using THC for younger children who are dealing with epileptic seizures or dealing with aut autism and uh, having seizures due to, to autism very beneficial in that and strong evidence to support the use of that for CBD and THC. But making sure you be extremely careful with THC. You have a provider who can monitor it and adjust the levels of THC versus CBD. Uh, we talked about cachexia. Next, we're going to talk about specifically uh, really helpful for, with using THC. THC is extremely been shown extremely beneficial for PTSD. Uh, Specifically, so I gave an example here in using a uh, substance called nabilone, which is pure THC. They found that when using nabilone, it had a significant reduction in night terrors or nightmares with patients suffering from PTSD. They also found that patients who had PTSD had a 50% reduction in anandamide, that naturally occurring 
hormone in the brain, that endocannabinoid in the brain, that bliss hormone. So really beneficial for the PTSD, very beneficial for sleep and helping to regulate and modulate that sleep and get you into that, that um, parasympathetic state. Again, I recommend seeing a professional if you're interested in or thinking about THC being an option. I always recommend starting on CBD and then uh, if that isn't getting the effects that you're looking for, reaching out to a professional or a prescriber uh, that is uh, approved for medical marijuana. Again, Dr. Regina Smith at Turnpike Health and Wellness Center in Mechanicsburg is wonderful. And then the products that I would recommend, like anything when we're dealing with over-the-counter, uh, like supplements or products, you need to be very specific with what you're getting. Uh, and you need to make sure that it is third party privately tested and that basically what they're selling you is true. So making sure you're finding out if the product is a hemp or marijuana derivative, mainly it's gonna be hemp if we're doing CBD. Uh, also making sure if there's any THC component in that CBD, remember it can get up, we can possibly have 0.3% and then uh, making sure you're having uh, a good product, that the product is vetted. So I would recommend three products that I recommend would be either Haley's Hope, would be Green Roads, or Charlotte's Web. Those are the three products I recommend. And then dosing is highly variable, always starting off small, working your way up if need be, and just making sure that you're seeing, seeking a practitioner to dose that uh, the dose the CBD as accurately for you as possible. If you're someone that's struggling from some of these issues and you want to get a better control of them, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to a practitioner like myself. I appreciate your time and, and spending the time with me here today. And if you have any questions or think you might benefit from this, or you want to talk about the use of CBD, don't hesitate to contact the number below or email the email address below. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.